today we are making etched glass projects. Hi y'all and welcome to Daily Dose of DIY. My name is Chris and I'm going to be showing you how to etch glass and make this casserole dish today. Of course you can etch any kind of glass like glass blocks. I have glass ornaments. You can do actually even glass glasses. Make wine glasses. Isn't that paw print ornament adorable? These make great, great gifts and they are easy to do. I'm telling you, they're easy. I do want to make a note on the Pyrex dishes. Not all Pyrex is made it equally. So if you already have a dish, you want to do a little test on it. Some Pyrex will not etch because of the way they're made, but most I have tried. I haven't run into any yet that haven't, but I've heard around there in craft groups, some don't. So if you already have some Pyrex, give it a test before you go through all of this. Another note, I have these SVGs for you for free as well. There's one that it says made with a love and one for a glass block. Of course, you can put it on anything that says home sweet home. These are available in both the regular SVGs and the stencil version for etched glass because we will be making stencils to etch this. Let's head on over and take a look at the supplies we'll need to make these amazing etched glass crafts. Okay, to etch glass, you are going to need some glass to etch. First, you can use glasses. I've done glass ornaments, glass blocks. Today, I'm going to show you how to etch on a glass casserole dish. You will need stencil vinyl or removable vinyl will work just as well and transfer tape. You're going to need your etch etching cream. This is Armor Etch Etching Cream. Some paper towels, of course your Cricut and your scraper tool, scissors, a paintbrush and your weeding tool. Let's head on over and take a look at the SVGs. I will show you how to get those set up and get them cut. Okay, we are in Design Space now, and I'm just going to come click up the upload button so we can upload the SVGs. Don't forget to, there it worked, don't forget to grab the SVG files. The link is in the description down below if you need help getting them downloaded and uploaded into Design Space. I will link a tutorial for that as well, or you can always just reach out to me and we'll help you get to this point. The SVGs that are in this little bundle are Made with Love in a stencil. Home Sweet Home is regular and in a stencil. And you can see I had to upload that stencil a bunch. I had some issues with it, but it's fixed now. You also get the Home or the Made with Love as a regular. So both come in a stencil version and a regular version. You need the stencil version for etched glass. Um, if you want to etch the words, which is what we're doing today. So I'm going to select the made with love stencil and bring it on into the canvas. The aspect ratio is already like in a rectangle for casserole dishes. So this is sized to my dish, which is smaller. Um, I think the size on it's like 11 by seven. So if your casserole dish is bigger or you smaller and you need to resize, just grab any corner and go up and down and make it the size you need. Otherwise, if you don't need to resize, just go ahead and click the make it button and that will take us to the matte screen. There's nothing we need to do here either. Yes, there is. My bad. We are putting this on the bottom of a casserole dish. If you're doing something like the glass blocks or the ornaments or something, you don't need to mirror it. But because we want it to be on the bottom of the dish so we can put food in it, we are going to mirror this so we can see it from the other side. Glad I remembered that before we got done. So if you're making a cas casserole dish, um, we're putting it on the bottom, mirror, mirror your design. Then click continue. If you have a Cricut Explore, set your dial to vinyl. I'm going to choose matte vinyl off of the list of materials. Let's head on over and get our mat loaded up. I just lined my vinyl up along the side and then along the top. You do want to get rid of any bubbles before you do, before you cut. So I'm just gonna use my scraper tool for that. Get it loaded and cut. And once it's done, we'll come back and get it weeded and on our casserole dish. Okay, it has finished cutting. And since my vinyl was so curled up, I'm just gonna leave it on the mat to weed it. First thing we're going to do is remove the extra 
from the frame and then with stencils you remove the inside it's a bit opposite of doing normal my weeding tool doesn't want to grab it so i'm going to remove all of the inside pieces leave the centers of the letters and get this weeded and ready to transfer now that it's weeded i'm just going to smooth it out again and get these bubbles out that bunched up Stencil vinyl is a little bit more notorious for doing this than regular vinyl, but I'm sure it's also from the fact that I've had <laughs> this vinyl rolled up for a long time. Next, we're going to add the transfer tape. I do that by starting with one end, just pulling down the back paper and giving it a little fold. So I only have one sticky part and then stick that over the stencil, smooth it down. So we're going to burnish this on so our stencil sticks to the transfer tape and then we can remove it from the mat. Now I'm just going to trim this up a little bit so it's easier to work with and then we will get it transferred to the back of our casserole dish. For your casserole dish you want to make sure it is clean so clean this off before you stencil it and make sure it is dry. I'm going to remove the paper backing from our stencil. Make sure all the insides of your letters and all the pieces stay in. Now, if you watched my Christmas countdown clock video, you could pick it up if you got it in the wrong spot and rearrange it. That is not so with glass. It, this will stick pretty quickly. So I'm gonna pull this down so I can just see a little bit better. Um, because once it's down, it's gonna stay stuck. So I just eyeball it and line it up and then put it down. You could also just remove half of the tape at one time and center it if you are not good at eyeballing things or want to make sure it's perfectly straight. But once it's on there, burnish it down really well. To remove the transfer tape, just go back slowly. I like to keep it down so you're not lifting the stencil up. And it should not have any problems coming off because the vinyl does stick itself to glass really well, like I said. On your stencil, you just want to make sure all the edges are nice and down. You can probably see there's some bubbles over here if they're showing up in camera. Those are fine, but I want to make sure all of the part that we are going to be etching is stuck down smooth and it looks like it is. So now it's time to grab your armor etch shake it up very very well and then we're going to apply it to our stencil so to apply the armor edge to your stencil you're going to need your paint brush and we're just going to dip it in here you do not want to paint back and forth like you think normal painting we're kind of just using the paint brush to blob it on so i'm doing an up and down motion and i just want to get everything really covered nice and thick. I don't want to be able to look down and see the glass through the etching cream. It needs to be a good thick layer. Okay, now that we are done, I'm going to let this sit. The instructions say to let it set for one minute. Of course, it's probably already been one minute since I started. So according to the instructions, the top should be done. I find that one, I get a little bit more even coverage if I go at least three minutes. Sometimes I even do five, so three to five minutes. And two, I start the countdown timer of those three to five minutes once I'm finished. So yes, the top might get a little bit more time, but it all turns out pretty even if you give it the extended time of three to five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so we are ready to remove this etching cream. I am going to start with paper towels. The instructions on the bottle say you can just wipe it or rinse it all down the drain, but I don't like doing that. So I'm going to remove the majority of it with a paper towel, just like so. And then I'm going to take it to the kitchen sink with the stencil on and all and just rinse this off. Okay, we are rinsed and we are wet. So note number one, don't freak out and think it didn't work because when this stuff is wet, you can't really see the etching. And note number two, when I ran it under like the cool water, I just used a, another paper towel to help remove like the residue. So now we can remove this stencil. 
I'm just going to peel it back and you'll be able to see some of the etching already. It does get darker as it dries. Now I'm going to use my weeding tool to get the rest of the bits in the insides of the letters. Now that all the vinyl's off, I'm just going to grab a paper towel and get it a little more dried up. You can see the etching coming through nicely. It might, it's not showing up quite so well in camera. And then of course, the reason we mirrored it is so you can see it from this direction on your casserole dish. And this is our finished dish. I moved my camera down so I can use my shirt as a background and get rid of that light glare so it pops and you can see how well this works. These make great, great gifts. You can add family names, make whatever kind of stencil you want. Of course, my stencils are free for you to use if you would like to grab them. The link is in the description. You can etch glass blocks. You can make etched glass ornaments. That's what we did in our November Cricut Crafters Club box. It was a whole lot of fun. I'll put a link to that in the description down below as well in case you would like to join us in our monthly crafting fun. Until next time, God bless.